Well, hey there, Brittany here from Be Hooked, and we're ready to dive into another make along tutorial. So today we'll be making these cute little baby sandals. They work up really fast. And well, first things first, go ahead and visit the link in the video description to find the free pattern and the list of supplies that you'll need to complete a pair. And then please do subscribe to this channel. I would love to crochet again with you in the future. So we'll start off this project by working the soles. So let's see how to do that first. We'll begin our sole with color A. We'll create a slip knot. And then chain nine. All right, now find your second chain from the hook. So that's the first one. This right here is the second, and I'm going to work a single crochet in that chain. Now for this time, just go ahead and catch that side loop of the chain. We're doing that because when we get to the other side of the round, we're going to be working in the opposite side of the chain. This just makes it a whole lot easier in doing so. Now continue to on. continue on, go ahead and make one single crochet into each of the next five chains. From here, we should have two chains remaining. We'll go ahead and half double crochet into that next chain. And for the last chain, we'll make seven half double crochets all in that chain. Now, as you start to get more and more half double crochets, you'll have to rotate your piece as you go. Once you've added those seven half double crochets, it should sort of work you around so that you're looking at the opposite side of the chain. What I like to do is hold on to the tail. This is the tail from my slip knot edge, just holding onto those in the, with my two fingers there in the background along the top of my work. I'm gonna work over this tail so I don't have to weave it in later. So for the next chain, we want to half double crochet. So just go ahead and yarn over. And your next chain is going to be right here. Now it's not a clear defined loop, but you can usually see a gap or an opening there. We don't see a, just one loop because remember we have a side loop and we have a back bump of the chain that remains. Now from here, we'll make one single crochet into each of the next five chains and your stitch placement will be right there. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And now we should have just one chain remaining. This one tends to be a little hidden because it was our first of this entire round. Basically what you want to do is find your first single crochet. I can see it right here. There's the V for that stitch. Follow it right down to where it sort of meets that chain. And I'll make three single crochets in that space. All right, now before we move on to round two, do a quick stitch count. You should have 23 stitches for round one. You'll also need to grab a stitch marker. I like to use these locking stitch markers, but a bobby pin or a safety pin or something like that will work just fine. We're gonna do that because we are not going to join with the slip stitch at the end of this round. We're gonna continue to work in a spiral. So for round two, we'll make two single crochets in our first stitch. That's my first single crochet here. Make your first single crochet and then place your marker in that stitch telling you that this is the first stitch of round two. Then we'll make a second single crochet in that same stitch. From here, we'll make one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Now 
we'll make a half double crochet in the next stitch followed by two half double crochets in the next stitch. Now we'll make one half double crochet in the next, followed by three half double crochets in the next stitch. And you know you're on the right track when this is the middle stitch from that previous round. We're increasing here right at the front of the sole. Now make one half double crochet in the next stitch, followed by two half double crochets in the next. By the way, don't forget you can find the pattern in the video description below. Now make one half double crochet in the next stitch, and make one single crochet in the next six stitches. Now we'll make two single crochets in the next stitch. One single crochet in the next, this is the second to last, and in the last stitch we'll make two single crochets. All right, now at the end of round two, go ahead and do a quick stitch count. You should have a total of 30 stitches at the end of this round. And by the way, if you see little gaps or holes, in the middle of your sole, all you have to do is tug at either end and that will straighten that right up. Okay, so let's move on to round number three. I'll remove my stitch marker and make two half double crochets in the first stitch. But remember, we need to mark this first one with our stitch marker so we know that this is the first stitch of the round. Make your second half double crochet in the same stitch. Now make one half double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. Now we'll make two half double crochets in the next stitch. Followed by one half double crochet in the next. And now at that very top stitch, we'll make three half double crochets. Now make one half double crochet in the next stitch, followed by two half double crochets in the next. Now make one half double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. We'll make two half double crochets in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next, and make two half double crochets into each of the last two stitches. Now before we wrap things up, go ahead and count your stitches once again. You should have a total of 38 stitches at the end of round number three. We can remove our stitch marker and we'll make a single crochet in that stitch. We're going to try and correct this jog. So leave it just like that. Cut yourself a tail that's about three to four inches. We don't need anything crazy here. And just pull straight up on that. We're gonna do an invisible join here. Now thread that tail on your darning needle and find the next stitch that's right next to that single crochet. We're going to run it through, so basically from front to back, catching both loops. Just pull that through. It'll kind of pull down that single crochet and make it sort of forced down a little bit. Then we want to find our next V over here. Go straight down into that V, catching just the back loop and poking it through the back side of the work and pull that. Now you see how it gives a V. We've basically just created one there so we can't see the join. It's a pretty cool little trick you can use anytime you're joining at the end of a round. Now from here we need to make sure this is nice and secure so I will go ahead and weave in 
my tail here along the back side of the sole. Now just for reference, when you're looking at your sole and the stitches look like this, this is the right side of the sole. Flipping that over, see how the stitches look a little different? This is the wrong side of the sole. From here, what you'll need to do is crochet three more soles. Each shoe is going to have two soles placed, you know, end over end to make it a little bit thicker and a little more comfortable to wear. When you have all four of your soles crocheted, we're going to take two of them and attach them to one another. So what we need to do is make the wrong sides facing inward. So right here, I'm looking at both of the right sides. I'm just gonna flip one of those over, place the other one on top. That way I'm looking at the right side, no matter which direction I'm looking at it. Next, we're going to grab color B. We'll create a slip knot. And we'll start at the heel. So the smaller end of the two is the heel. This is the toe. Now look at the stitches from each of our soles. So this is the bottom, this is the top. We have a front loop and a back loop on the bottom sole. We have a front loop and a back loop on the top sole. For the stitching together portion here, we're going to use the back loop of the bottom sole and the front loop of the top sole. You'll place your slip knot loop on your hook, pull that through the two stitches, and we'll chain one. We're not counting this chain one as a stitch. And from here, we're going to slip stitch throughout. So find your next stitch on the bottom and the top, place your hook in the back loop of the bottom, the front loop of the top, yarn over, pull through those two stitches, and then through the loop on your hook. And we'll repeat that for every stitch in our sole. When you've made it all the way around, you have one slip stitch in every stitch. We're just going to cut the, the yarn and we'll pull that straight through. We'll do that invisible join once again. This is just to make sure it looks nice and tidy here on the back side of our sandal. So find your first slip stitch, run the darning needle under both loops of that stitch from front to back, pull it through, now find your last slip stitch and go in from front to back, just catching the back loop. And now we can weave that in on the back side. By the way, this is the underside of the sole. I just like to weave it in right along this line of stitches. And we'll do the same for our other tail. Next, we're going to add a little bit of detail to the sole. We're also going to secure the two sides in the process. So flip it over so that you're looking at the wrong side. Focus your attention down here at the heel and between the last two rounds here. So this line right here is where we're going to work some surface crochet stitches. So just start anywhere in the heel, stick your hook just right through, come back out the other side, make sure that you're in that line between those last two rounds. We'll just place that there for a minute. We're using color B here. You'll make a slip knot, 
place that loop on your hook and just pull it right on through. Now right here at the beginning is sort of where we have a spiral, so we need to fudge things just a little bit. I'm gonna go just right into that next stitch, pop it back out the other side. Again, I just wanna make sure I'm on the right track. And then yarn over, pull that through both sides of the sole, and then through the loop on your hook. And we'll go right on down. So from here, we're sort of away from that spiral enough. I can stick my hook just in that next space. Quick check on the other side. I'm in between those last two rounds. Yarn over, pull up a loop, then pull through the loop on my hook. We're not necessarily shooting for a specific number here. We just want to try and get a little line of stitches. So when we look at it from the bottom side, we see this nice pretty braid. And when we look at it from the top side, we sort of have just a smooth line. So keep targeting one surface crochet for every stitch that you see between these two rounds. I'm really just eyeballing those little holes there, poking my hook through there, and that's where I know to work my stitches. So the next hole is right here. I'll poke that through. Another thing you wanna be certain is that you're keeping your tension consistent. It's really easy to crochet these surface crochet stitches more tight than you normally would. We don't want that to occur because we don't want to, to distort the shape. Now when you've made it all the way around, it should look something like this on the bottom side and like this on the top side. We can go ahead and fasten off here. Again, we'll do that invisible join. Pull straight up on that tail. And then we can weave in our tail. Now we're moving on to the side strap. We're going to make four total of these are really quick and easy. So grab color A and create your slip knot. And we'll chain 13. You'll find your second chain from the hook and we'll single crochet there. I'm going to flip my chain over and work through the back bump. So that guy right there, because this has a better look and feel to it. And then we'll make one single crochet in each remaining chain. All right, now at the end of that row, you should have a total of 12 stitches. We have just one more row to go. We'll chain one and turn our work, which by the way, that chain one does not count as a stitch. And all we need to do is make one single crochet in every stitch. So because this chain doesn't count, my first stitch is right here. And we'll continue with one single crochet into every stitch. Again, we'll have a total of 12 single crochet at the end of this row. When you get to the end of that row, we can fasten off. Leave yourself a tail that's about four to six inches. We're gonna use this tail to sew it onto the sandal later. This time we can just pull that tail through the loop on our hook and we're ready to go. Now we need to make a total of four of these side straps. Next, we're going to crochet the ankle strap. I'm using color A again. Create a slip knot. And this time we'll chain 27. Just like with the side strap, we're going to locate our second chain and single crochet there. Again, I'm working in the back bump of the chain. You can do whatever is comfortable for you. 
And then our repeat begins one single crochet into every chain. Now at the end of row one, you should have a total of 26 stitches. We have just one more row to go. You'll chain one, turn your work, and that chain one will not count as your first stitch. So go ahead and single crochet right there in that first stitch. And then just make one single crochet into every stitch. When you get to the end of that row, we're going to create a buttonhole with just a really simple chain. So go ahead and chain four. And then rotate your strap so you're looking at the bottom. Find your first stitch, and we're just going to slip stitch there. So we've just got a simple little loop there. Now we can fasten off. We'll need to make two of these angle straps. So first we'll take one of our side straps and fold it in half. And then whichever tail is longer, thread that on your darning needle. Now we'll situate the side straps here on either side of the heel portion of the sole. The idea is to measure up about three quarters of an inch from this back edge. And that's sort of where this will be situated. Then once you find that perfect placement, we're just gonna whip stitch this into place. Now the first thing I'll do is sort of go in on that front portion and just pull that all the way through. So now I sort of have it in place. Then I will run my needle up from the back side and just sort of go through both sides and just pop it back out the front. And we can't really do whip stitches here because then we'll be messing up our pattern here. So that's why I'm kind of going back and forth rather than around. We want to have it as close to this line as possible. Once you have that sewn in place, you can go ahead and weave in this tail along the back side. Also, we'll weave in this tail as well. And we'll repeat that for the other side strap. Just go ahead and fold it in half and sew it directly across from your other side strap. Okay, now the next thing we're going to work on is the ankle strap, so gather that. So here is my left sandal almost completed, and I wanna point out how this strap goes into place. So we're basically sewing it in place on one of the side straps and then running it through, and then we'll add this little toe feature later. So for the left sandal, when you're working on it, you're going to sew it to your left side strap. For the right sandal, we're going to sew it to the right side strap. Now we don't want to use our buttonhole end because we want that to be open. So we'll sew it in place with our other tail. And the first thing I'll do is just run it in through the center of this side strap. And I want to align it so that it's flush with the top and the front side. And then we can just whip stitch this closed, being certain that we're catching all three layers, so both sides of the side strap and then the ankle strap there inside. And then you can weave in the tail along the inside of the side strap. Now make sure it's not twisted. We're going to run the other side through that other side strap and we will situate the button right here on the outer edge. We'll do that in just a little bit. 
Next, we want to grab color A and create a slip knot. And we'll count over about eight stitches from your buttonhole. You can really just count them by looking at the front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. Now the idea here is to this to be roughly in the center. So you can just give that a quick check, make sure you're on the right track, and then place your slip knot loop on your hook, and then pull that through. Now just rotate your sandal around so that it's nice and comfortable as you're working these chain stitches. What we're going to do is chain seven. Now don't fasten off yet, just pull up on that active loop. Just hold on to it with your two fingers so you don't lose those stitches. And we're going to place it into the sole now at this point. I have the right sandal here, so I'm going to go slightly to the left of the center point, and I'm just going in one row. So this opening right here looks good, but you want to come from the back. Then you'll place that active loop on your hook, pull it tight, and just simply pull that through both sides of the sole. Now from here, we can go ahead and fasten off. Trim yourself a tail that's a few inches long. We're going to make sure this is nice and secure. Now pull up on that. You're basically just pulling your tail right on through, but hold on to your chain there. You don't want to pull that through the sole. Just get it flush, and then we can weave this in and secure it here on the back side of the sole. Okay, so we're almost done with the assembly here. We've got a few more tails to weave in. We're going to weave in the tail on the buttonhole side. I like to just do this on the underside of the strap. And then also the tail from where we just added that little toe piece. Just weave that in along the back side of your ankle strap as well. And the last thing we'll do is sew our button to the outside of the side strap there. Now the last thing we'll do is take just a small cut of yarn. We're going to tack the ankle strap into our side strap here. Otherwise it kind of can move around. We want to just make that nice and secure. So thread a cut of yarn on your darning needle. And we want to work from the inside out. And the first thing you'll need to do is just make sure everything's nice and even. We want it to be directly across from the other side. Then we'll just run the needle through all layers. Leave yourself a little tail there so we can weave it in. And then I'll just go around one more time. Kind of doing this like I would sew on a button. Now first I like to tie these two together and then I'll weave in the tails.
All right, that's all for today's tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll share a progress photo with me on social. You can find me on Instagram at BeHooked or you can post a photo directly to my Facebook page at Be Hooked Crochet. Be sure to hit the like button if you found this tutorial helpful in any way, shape, or form. Hopefully you have. And subscribe to the show if you haven't done so already. My sole purpose here is to help you get better at your craft, and I do that through episodes of Be Hooked TV and through these make-along tutorials. So subscribe to the show, you'll never miss them.